When I was doing my Docker from scratch talk on the Reactor live stream the other week, I got asked a few questions afterwards about how I set up my terminal for doing um, like WSL development and how I have all of that configured. So I just want to do a quick video that looks at some of this stuff. Uh, so right now, um, we'll jump over to my terminal. And I have, oops, if we jump over to my terminal correctly, there we go. Uh, I have WSL2 configured uh, on my machine. So that's actually what I spend most of my time in, um, not PowerShell or CMD.exe or anything like that. WSL2 is my primary uh, terminal. And I run a few things over the top of that to make it a bit easier for me to work with. Uh, so I have um, my default shell is not bash. I use ZSH with the oh my ZSH plugin manager and theme manager and stuff like that over the top. Um, so that gives me some niceties. Like I, I can load up a custom theme, which will, is how I get the, the prompt broken down the way that it is. You know, so I have uh, a tittle, which is the current directory I'm in, and then where I'm actually you know, typing the command that I'm running um, on the line below that. Um, I have some uh, aliases that I've set up, like CDG, which would take me to the uh, location where I keep all my uh, source code uh, for projects that I'm working on. So you'll see now that the path has been updated to slash uh, tittle slash code slash GitHub, um, where I'm at. Uh, but I then, over the top of this, I run Tmux. Tmux is a terminal multiplexer that allows me to do some things around uh, make it just, I guess, life a lot easier when I'm spending all my time in the terminal, which I actually spend a lot of my time in uh, terminal these days. And the, the multiplexer gives me like, things like the status bar that you see across the bottom. And from that, you know, I've just customized it a bit to so the things that I'm really interested in, so like knowing what the IP address kind of locally and um, externally of uh, my machine, you can see those there, um, that I am actually online. So this is kind of useful if I'm having you know, network connectivity issues, which I'm on the NBN, which means I have network connectivity issues quite frequently. Uh, and then I've just got kind of date time information and stuff like that. Um, now I've just hit uh, control uh, B, uh, which in Tmux is the modifier key or it's the default modifier key. You can customize that, but I haven't bothered. Um, so control B, uh, you'll see highlights now in the bottom right hand corner. And I can use that while the modifier is up um, to do things like split my terminal. So I can split horizontally, vertically, and these then are all like independent terminals that I can work with, um, kind of like this one windowed view of something that I might be doing. So I could be in a folder um, running like logs against a Docker container as it's running. Um, I have another uh, split window, which is actually connected into the container. I might have then uh, just a, a like a freeform shell where I might be typing, typing other commands, working with Git repos and stuff like that. Uh, other things that I can do with um, Tmux, which is useful, is I can like create new windows. So this is, I guess, essentially creating a new tab with inside of the Windows Terminal app or um, whatever terminal app you're using. But because it's all with inside of um, here, I like inside of um, Tmux, I can just kind of quickly switch back and forth uh, between them just with command uh, control B W. Uh, just gives me a list of all the active windows. I can easily jump back and forth. Uh, but let's jump into uh, say a folder. Like we'll go into where my blog is, and uh, because I've got a package JSON in the root of my blog. It's detecting that, well, there's a package JSON and the version file, uh, the version of that is listed as v100, which is fine because my blog is actually not publishing as an NPM module. Um, and then the node version that's currently loaded is v13. And then I have like a node version manager where I can um, uh, fmn uh, use 12, tell it to use a different version of node. So it swaps to like version 12 and then you see that's uh, updated in the terminal. Uh, if we went to say somewhere where I have a .NET project, it's going to tell me that uh, .NET Core SDK that I've got installed is 31200, uh, uh, sorry, 201, uh, and kind of useful stuff like that. And then um, I'll jump over to System Init. So this is where I keep all my scripts to actually setting up my environments, both Windows and Linux environments. Uh, and you also have noticed in the prompt that when I go into a Git repo, it kind of drops a whole bunch of the path prefixing. Like I don't need the tittle slash code slash um, GitHub is just telling me I'm in system in it because that's like that's the working directory or the Git um, context that I'm in. I don't really care about the parent path uh, that much. Uh, we have the I'm currently on the the master branch and it's connected to an upstream. I have no outstanding change or anything like that. Now, if we were to load this up, I use um, VS Code Insiders with the remote um, extensions installed, so remote WSL. Uh, we'll hit enter on that and we'll jump over to VS Code. There we go. That's loaded up. And these are the scripts I actually use to set up my machine. Um, so I have Windows and Linux scripts, as I said before. So the, the Windows scripts will go and do things like install Chocolatey um, and then install basically any GUI tool that I'm gonna need. 
because the, the Linux stuff is all around terminals, I don't run um, like a, an X11 server that I then um, forward uh, Linux um, GUI tools across to. Like, there's kind of no value in that, I don't think, um, at least for the most part. So I, I run just things like Fiddler, uh, Postman, LinkPad, and stuff like that. Like, they're, they're GUI tools that I'm going to need for dev, and I install those just on the Windows machine itself, on, on the Windows host. But then most of the stuff I actually do is going to be in Linux. I have a separate set of Linux um, setup scripts, which if we come right down to the bottom, that's where the, the main stuff is. Um, I do things like an app get upgrade uh, when I first run. So I just make sure my machine's got all the, the latest up to date um, bits and pieces on it. Install a couple of useful tools like unzip and curl and jq. Um, chances are they're probably already going to be there, but it's always good to just install things that you're going to need even um, if you think they're possibly still there, better to be um, uh, make sure they're there rather than just assume that they're going to be there. Um, set up directories and then install the various sets of things that I need. So I install Git, I set up my shell, um, set up Docker. I actually use the Linux version of Docker. We come up to uh, install Docker. Uh, this is if you go to the Docker website and just follow their install instructions for Ubuntu, this is exactly what you do. Um, you install a couple of um, things like, oh, I probably don't actually need to install curl here because uh, I've already installed it, but it's better, like I said, better safe than sorry. It's not going to reinstall it. Um, and then uh, set up the like the appropriate keys so I can add the um, the Docker repository and then pull that down, um, install Docker CE uh, um, and that sort of stuff, and then add my user and start Docker up. Um, so I don't have to do sudo every single time. I can just do Docker PS and I don't have to um, admin privilege everything. Uh, I set up some dev tools. So things like um, the .NET Core SDKs. I install the, the ones that I commonly work with, like the 2.2 and the 3.1. Um, I then, uh, I've got a prompt in here that if like I want to install the, the 5 um, preview or like if I wanted to install preview SDK, like once 5 is no longer preview, there might be other previews. Uh, I can just prompt to do that. But I tend to do those as Docker images rather than uh, as full-blown installs on disk. Um, other runtimes that I'm working with, such as Golang, sometimes I want to install that, sometimes I don't. So I just have that sort of sitting there. Um, here's where I set up FNM or Fast Node Manager, which is just the thing I use to swap between multiple versions of Node on a machine. Uh, and I used to install Fury Code, uh, but I actually don't need Fury Code anymore because I tend to do everything uh, with the new uh, Cascadia Code um, font that we have uh, published from Microsoft as part of like the, uh, the Windows Terminal and all that kind of work. So that's um, kind of, we set all a bunch of that sort of stuff up there. Now that I've removed a chunk of code, if we jump over the terminal and get status, uh, we'll see that there's a change. And now I get a, like a bang in my terminal, just telling me that I've got an outstanding change. Add that. And then we do commit dash M, removing unneeded, needed font. And you'll see that now it's just telling me I've got some upstream commits that I could send, so I can push those up if I want. Um, other things of interest, so I, here's my Tmux config. So I um, that's how I do like the online status and I'll modify the status bar. And I also bring in a couple of um, plugins. Uh, I, this kind of really cool plugin I've got uh, came across called URL view. Uh, so if we go say git remote, uh, I always forget this uh, show dash V, that's it. Um, so this, like, you know, I might have cutted out a readme file or I might have had some response come out of um, something that I've pulled down and it's got some URLs in it. Now, I want to actually get to that URL quite easily. Uh, now I'm going to do confan b u. It pops up and it's done a scan of, like, uh, what's recently come into the um, into the terminal output. And, hey, look, there's a URL. I can hit enter on that. And that's going to pop over in a URL. Um, I've, con I've configured this to run in MS Edge on desktop, um, by default, it will actually go back and run that in um, like a, I think it's link, uh, uh, links um, just by default. Uh, so you can actually customize that. So if you want to use Edge or Firefox or Chrome or whatever, um, that's kind of nifty. Um, and it's, it's useful again, if you're spending a lot of time at the terminal, to be able to flick that kind of stuff there. Um, I have like my Vim RC. So every now and then I find myself in Vim and uh, apart from regretting my life choices of ending up in Vim. I have just a few things in there to make it a bit easier and hopefully so I can get back out of it. Um, my ZSHRC, uh, so uh, the theme I'm using, if we scroll up to the top, it's called Spaceship, there it is. Um, that's how I get that kind of line breakdowns. And then it's also got uh, the configs I've got to auto start T marks and some plugins that I install and um, like path information and stuff like that. So that when I start up my shell, I get everything um, that I want in there. 
uh, yeah. And, and that's kind of like how I do um, WSL2 development um, or do development using WSL2 as my primary shell, uh, but then still use things like VS Code and a little bit of Windows um, touching around. Uh, if you found that helpful, let me know. Uh, if there's things that you want to know more about, like I'm on a dev version setup, um, yeah, let me know and I'm happy to kind of do a walkthrough. See ya.